You're on mute, Anna. Good, great. I'm going to hit record. I've hit record, so hopefully you should get that notification. And I'm going to start the presentation now about Creativity and Wellbeing Week. So Creativity and Wellbeing Week, hopefully you can all hear me and you can see the slides. Um, the very lovely Michael Rosen there. Uh, so this presentation is a bit more about the festival and how you can get involved this year. Um, so just a bit of general housekeeping. As I said, the captions are on. If you can stay on mute, we are recording just this presentation part. Um, and please feel free to use the chat to chat amongst yourselves, ask any burning questions and introduce yourself as well. Uh, so Creativity and Wellbeing Week is back for 2023. Um, some feedback from 2022. We often get asked a lot, like, what, why Creativity and Wellbeing Week? Um, and this was some uh, participant feedback from last year saying, it's such a brilliant idea. It's wonderful to see so many different arts and wellbeing activities brought together under one umbrella and inspiring to see what else is going on in the sector. So we love Creativity and Wellbeing Week for that reason. It really is that moment in the calendar where Across England, we uh, get to shout about what we're doing. There's a platform, there's attention on what creative health, what creativity and well-being is. Um, and it's really exciting to curate lots of your events and kind of showcase and share those stories. Um, so this is the only kind of national program of work that celebrates creative health, um, bringing uh, creative health organizations together, like I said, to showcase their work, um, and it's really made possible through partnerships. So we really rely on you, our members, getting involved. Um, last year, we worked with really brilliant organizations from hospitals like University Hospital Lewisham, the Royal Horticultural Society, Misery, Breathe Arts and Health Research, Julie's Bicycle, the National Center for Creative Health, Barnsley Council, Norfolk Council, and many, many more. And we had around 200 events last year with thousands of people attending those events and a huge reach on social media. And what we found, we did a piece of research last year is that taking part really helped people, not only professionally, but also personally, it helps people to network, find out what's happening in their region. Um, and it also makes a positive difference to everyone's mental health, which is a good thing. So this year we have a new provocation. Uh, which is what's the role of creativity in a health crisis? And I'm going to hand over to Victoria to just talk through a couple of quotations um, from research that bring the provocation to life. Hi again, everyone. Um, so <clears throat> this is partly because we, as some of you know, we've previously we've had themes for the year. And one of the things that we heard from you uh, after last year was that the theme is not necessarily that helpful. And in fact, what's good about the week is that it's really broad and that anybody who's working with anything creative or cultural that supports health or well-being is can be part of the week so what we thought we'd do instead <clears throat> is is ask you a question um which is what's the role of creativity in a health crisis now it's up to you whether you want to answer this question through your event um there's absolutely no obligation to do that <clears throat> We will probably be addressing it through our headline events, which Anna's going to talk about shortly. Um, and we will run a social media campaign. But we we would really value your help thinking through this question. Um, so if you want to explore that during your events, that would be great. Um, just to sort of kickstart some thinking about that, um, there's there are a couple of quotes here, as Anna said. So this is, uh, <clears throat> some of you will know of Lord Howarth of Newport, who's been a, a very consistent advocate for, for arts and health for many, many years. And um, <clears throat> early last year made a series of speeches in the House of Lords that aligned creativity and culture with health and well-being and were um, leading up to an attempt to amend the health and social care bill. <clears throat> and his what he said as part of one of his speeches was, Non-clinical approaches can help us move away from the present state of affairs in which we are under-doctored and over-medicated, and they will bring significant cost savings. The World Health Organization's scoping review reported that evaluation of arts on prescription suggested an average return on investment of £2.30 for every pound spent through reductions in unnecessary prescribing and the use of health services, including emergency hospital admissions. <clears throat> so that's one approach, I guess, to thinking about how this work might relate to a health crisis. Um, and then the next quote, thanks, Hannah. 
is from Daisy Fancourt, who I'm so sure many of you are aware of, who's um, one of our leading researchers in this area. <clears throat> she wrote a blog for us kindly um, at the Culture, Health and Wellbeing Alliance, and this was to introduce that scoping review that Lord Howarth highlighted. Uh, and she said it's over 12 years since Sir Nigel Crisp, who was then the chief executive of the NHS, published a report concluding that arts and health are and should firmly be recognised as being integral to health, healthcare provision and healthcare environments. Progress has certainly been made. Few would argue that the arts are firmly recognised as integral. This report cements the fact that a lack of evidence is not what's holding us back. Certainly more research is needed, but what we also need is further policy action based on the mountain of evidence. So <clears throat> another thought that might contribute to perhaps to your thinking about the role of creativity in a health crisis. I think I'd also add um, from our perspective that one of the things we've been trying to do is to think about the role that creativity and culture has in relation not just to individuals and their diagnoses, but to health structures and systems where people find it difficult to access health services or who are not benefit benefiting from them equally. <clears throat> and, you know, how can creativity and culture serve a purpose in that context? Is there a role for this work in, in supporting equity in health, which we know is a really urgent problem in this country? So um, those are some thoughts hopefully that stimulates something for you um and as i said there's no obligation to explore this in your events but if you want to if you want to be part of that process please do and look out for the social media campaign when it comes to that over to you Atma. thanks victoria so again we will share all of this because it's a lot of very pithy information but this will come out later this week so you can have these quotations and and get hold of the provocation um so i thought what might be useful um Often what Victoria and I do is kind of curate some events across England um, that kind of uh, speaks to the provocation and hopefully uh, these are all free events to be involved with. Um, so uh, on the Monday, Monday the 15th of May in London, we'll be working with Kings. We've got a great partnership with Kings where we welcome Michael Rosen, Kevin Fenton, uh, Paintings in Hospitals, uh, exploring the I'm Fine project, working with clinical staff and also a brilliant creative health practitioner and poet Argie uh, to speak to this provocation and to sort of share not only creative work, Michael's going to be reading from his new book, exploring his experiences in the pandemic, but also to um, have a panel debate, a discussion about this provocation. So that will be an in-person event to kick off the week. Uh, on the Tuesday, we have a bit of a research focus, actually, and these will be nationwide events. So they will all be online and again, free to attend and recorded as much as possible so we can share that information afterwards with all of you. Um, so first event be from UCL's perspective, uh, looking really specifically at uh, the UKRI fund and around which is about uh, 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 mobilizing community assets to tackle health inequalities. So we'll be hearing from uh, Helen Chatterjee about that amongst others. And also the National Center for Creative Health will be running a, a round table um, event, which will look uh, really specifically at embedding creative health in the ICS system. So within the integrated care systems, and they'll also be running a bit of a Twitter provocation about this, which we really encourage everyone once you get involved in that debate, whether it's um, sharing your own ideas or evidence or just asking questions. <laughs> or, bless you, <laughs> whoever sneezed. Uh, on the Wednesday, we're hoping to run a practitioner uh, focus kind of networking and care event for global majority practitioners in London. Uh, and on the Thursday, there's an event in Manchester, which looks uh, around an update on the Manchester Creative Health Strategy, which was launched in November last year. So we're really excited to hear more from the partners involved in that, the ICS partner uh, from uh, Greater Manchester um, uh, GMC themselves uh, and the artistic organisations involved um, and to sort of find out what's going on with the strategy. And then on the Friday, we have another brilliant nationwide event, including Sewa Cunningham, uh, who's a leading dementia practitioner um, and also arts for dementia. So this will be really looking actually at uh, a dementia practice uh, specifically, but again, hearing kind of case studies um, and, and understanding what practice is going on. So how can you get involved? That's just a snapshot of some of the events we've been working on, but there's 
really easy ways. And we really um, welcome and invite you. And we're really excited to hear about your events and ideas as well. So you can get involved. You can upload to the website now an event. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be um, something that requires uh, lots of budget. Um, it can just simply be even a conversation in your, in your area where you're based. It could be online. Um, but yeah, we really welcome anything that uh, kind of uh, goes under the umbrella. Um, and you can upload your event to the website. We also have lots of assets. So I will share a link to those in the chat once I finish presenting. But we've got posters that can be amended. We've got um, assets for Eventbrite, for social media. Um, we have a uh, press release template, like lots of different tools that you can just readily kind of lift and use to advertise and uh, talk about and share your event. Um, and we can also help if you want some help with design or making those assets bespoke, you can absolutely ask us to support you in that way as well. Um, yep, add your event to the website. That's a really good starting point. And also something we really welcome and invite and need our stories and blogs. So um, we know as well that the NCCH are gathering evidence for their APPG review in creative health. And all of this really helps tell that story um, of creative health across England. So if you've got an idea for a blog or a story or a podcast, anything like that, please, please do get in touch with, that, with us. And between us, Victoria and I can promote that through our networks and support you in producing those stories. So I talked about assets. What does that mean? Literally, we've got um, some designed up templates. So like I mentioned, a poster, an Eventbrite header, there's a button that you can use on social media or on your website, logos. We also have two ready to go surveys. So if you're an event organizer, we really welcome you to take part in that survey. And likewise, if you're organizing an event with people attending, there's a ready to make, ready, ready to go survey that you can distribute out at the end of your event to gather in people's feelings and reflections on how they felt. We're also looking for organizations to be part of regional BBC radio coverage. So this worked really well last year. We partnered with Creative Lives. Victoria, maybe you could give a, a little overview of Creative Lives in a second, but there's four regional areas particularly that we're looking for organizations working in creative health to go on air and chat with local um, uh, radio to, to share their stories, to talk about creative health across England. Vic, I don't know if you wanted to add a bit more detail to this. Sure, so <clears throat> some of you will know Creative Lives, I'm sure they um, are a national membership organization that focuses on um, well, I, I think they now, <clears throat> they, they used to be called voluntary arts. So essentially it's arts and creativity that's not supported um, through professional artists necessarily. A lot of community-based practice and they run, um, they have a strong relationship with BBC Radio around the country um, and have partnered with us for a couple of years to support creativity and wellbeing week. So uh, as Anna said, if you are working in those areas, we can connect you with a local producer who Creative Lives uh, manage, and hopefully they will be able to promote your event more broadly or your work. It doesn't have to be an event, as Anna said. Amazing. Thank you. So again, just get in contact with us. I've just put some links and the uh, email address as well if you, if you want to chat to us about any of this. Um, and finally, um, I'm sure everyone kind of is already aware of things like this, but if you are running an event, um, think about what kind of components you might need, including things like public liability insurance or event insurance, if that's relevant. Um, and like we said, this really doesn't have to be about putting on something new. It's just about shining a spotlight on the amazing work everyone is already doing. And literally a simple conversation starter is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the hashtag will be Creativity and Wellbeing Week, and you can add on the year as well if you would like. That's always really helpful for us to kind of monitor and engage in conversations on social media. And that's it in a nutshell. You can email us and ask for support. Um, we have a, a small but mighty team that can help from with anything from uploading to the website to um, kind of amending the bespoke assets with your own kind of uh, images or information. Um, and we're really excited to see what people have got planned and, you know, how they can join in this year. So I'm going to stop sharing and stop recording. 
Like I said, these slides and the recording will be later, uh, be available later on this week. And Victoria, I think what we're going to do now actually is open up some breakout rooms so that people can introduce themselves to each other and find out a bit more about each other and what you might be planning.